Well, um, I told you earlier we had some leaders in this uh, in this gathering. Is that the case? A amen. A amen. Amen. Hard act to follow. Good act to follow. So, uh, you know, those of us gathered here, we understand that a uh, world brimming with thousands of megaton nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert is uh, pretty dangerous to all of us, our society, the planet. We also know that the number of Americans for whom changing that policy uh, is way too small to be politically effective, almost politically invisible. And that we, if we're gonna uh, you know, be successful here, we absolutely need to broaden the constituencies in our country for whom reducing the war budget uh, and stopping uh, the nuclear conflagration is, is one of their pri priorities and not just our priority. Now, everybody here knows that across the nation, millions of people have been marching for health care, for women's rights, against gun violence, for environmental and climate protection. And these mobilizations will almost certainly continue and they'll influence the 2018 and 2020 congressional elections. But it's not clear that cutting the Pentagon budget and nuclear disarmament will be on the agenda of those organizations. I went to that, um, we had a staunch group of peace action delegates who went to the big climate march at 200,000 people. Our delegation was at the very end. By mistake, I started off in the front. So I had to wait for 200,000 people to go by. And I'm looking at the signs and I'm waiting for some signs saying, protect our planet from climate change and nuclear winter or nuclear Not a one, right? Until at the tail edge, the peace action people came, came along, right? And it was clear that th this issue is not, not on the agenda of the climate movement, very sad. So our task is to ensure that cutting the Pentagon budget, reducing the war danger, are included in their agendas. And the truth of the matter is that without cutting the Pentagon budget, they're not gonna be able to get health care and housing and, and transit. There's an objective uh, necessity. It's not a matter of ideology, it's the truth. On the other hand, if you're a tenant who faces eviction from your apartment, that's the existential crisis for you. If you're a family who can't afford nursing care for aging parents, that's your crisis. For a young person who has to drop out of college because of excessive costs, that's their crisis. For commuters who can't get to work or get to school or get to the hospital because the trains are not running, that's their crisis. And you can't go to those people and say, don't worry about what you're worried about. The real danger is that the planet will get, get destroyed. No, we need to unite with those people and say to them, yes, we're with you. We need affordable housing. We need health care for all. We need reliable trains that run on time. We need tuition-free college. Uh, and then we have to say, but how come in the richest nation on earth we can't afford these basic human needs? How come in the most technologically advanced nation on earth we, we have 1940 trains and everybody else in the world has, has up-to-date trains? In my experience, people listen to that to that question, and they wait for your answer, right? Say, oh, it's a good question. How come? You know, what do you think? Well, when I say, well, the reason in the richest country on earth we don't have money for what you need is because we're spending all the money on the Pentagon and we're buying uh, new atomic submarines rather than new, new, new subways. They're a little surprised, and then I whip out the pie chart and show them that, oh, see? More than half the money you sent to the, to the IRS last year, they're spending uh, that on, on weapons. That's why there's no money for your program. In my experience, that's the only way I have ever been able to get these issues raised at a housing conference or a public transit conference or a biomedical research conference, which I go to regularly. I have had the experience of being the chair of the program committee on those conferences and being voted down when I said, well, we ought to talk about the whole federal budget and not just the housing or the, or, or the NIH. However, that situation uh, is changing. Now, our peace action, Massachusetts Peace Action, our Nuclear Disarmament Working Group, we have a campaign. Um, the ca campaign is technically, it's no to the trillion dollar 
trillion tax to pay a dollar nuclear weapons escalation. So we're not saying abolition, we're not saying overall nuclear disarmament, we're saying don't spend a trillion tax dollars on upgrading the nuclear weapons. But the brochure, which we, I guess we didn't get it in the, in the packet, doesn't say that on the front page. What the brochure says is invest in mines, not missiles, fund healthcare, not warfare, build subways, not submarines, build homes, not bombs, fund solar energy. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Pass them out. I'm always prepared. Right. Fund solar energy, not, not nuclear winter. Uh, and that is the, the key. But it's key that we believe in that, right? We have to really take seriously that you're about to lose your apartment. That's a crisis, right? It's not, we're not faking it. It's not PR. It's the stone truth. And it's also true they're not going to get that housing budget back to what it was 25 years ago without cutting this Pentagon budget. One of the problems, though, it's not like the days of the nuclear weapons freeze campaign where one slogan met all. That's not going to work in this period of, of US history. This outreach can't be a blanket process. We can't go to housing advocates and ask them to support building subways, not submarines. I can report empirically that that fails completely, right? Uh, and we can't go to public transit advocates and say build housing, not bombs, right? And we can't go to my biomedical graduate students and talk about building housing. They don't care about housing. They don't care about transit. The crisis to them is that their NIH grant won't be renewed. That means they will get laid off. That's the end of their career. That's the crisis. So I say to them, yeah, we got to invest in mines, not missiles. We got to fund the NIH, which was 3% and not the Pentagon budget. And they, I'm not saying they get mobilized, but, 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 but they listen. And I can tell you, I give the talk, reducing the danger of nuclear, uh, uh, nuclear war, five students show up. So invest in mines, not missiles. 25 students sh sh show up, right? Because that's, that's where, where they are. So um, we're not, uh, we're with Andrea. We don't think the situation is ripe to actually ask congressmen to vote that way yet. We would just like to make sure that in the people's budget, we're already, they have a little gesture to cut the military budget, cutting the overseas contingency thing, and talking about limiting the nuclear weapons that we get as a strong plank, no to that trillion dollar escalation, not a, not a penny of it. There's about 100 progressive members across the country, so we're talking about reaching people in those 100 districts and asking them to lobby their congressmen. It's an easy ask because it's not yet a vote. It's their budget. Right, they ought to be able to put in the, what their budget, what they want, and of course, what will be probably key is to combine that with these districts where there's somebody in play, and go to somebody who's running in a primary and say, if you get elected, right, would you pledge to at least get into the people's budget, uh, no to the trillion dollar um, arms race. Now. Uh, let me just, to make this a little concrete, invest in mines, not missiles. Um, in this seventh congressional district, there's more than a billion federal dollars that come into colleges and universities and medical schools paying the salary. It's invisible. It's not in the state budget. It's not shown explicitly in the federal budget. You have to know it. But there are thousands and thousands of graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, and technicians in this district, 2,000 in the Central Square area alone, who are absolutely dependent on NIH, NSF, DOE fellowship. Many people think that graduate students pay to go to graduate school. They don't. They get paid $35,000 a year plus tuition, remission, second biggest area of employment uh, in, in the, the Boston area. This is true in across the country where there are research um, 
uh, areas, research universities and medical schools. Now, all of these people lobby militantly around the NIH budget to get it from 3% to 3.05%. And I have been on committees for 25 years that lobbied this. If you say, maybe we should join together with the housing advocates, nope. Nope, let's not dilute the issue. What about all the money going to the Pentagon? Oh, that's political. But this year, for the first time, some of you may remember that Trump himself, well, Mick Mullaney was most explicit. The National Governors Association asked Mullaney, the budget director, why were they cutting 20% from the NIH budget, such a popular program, and the EPA budget, and the State Department, and the Meals on Wheels? And Mulvaney said, it's because we need to transfer $57 billion to the Pentagon budget. So we had to cut the civilian side. And then John McCain jumped on it. $57 billion was enough. He got it up to, to, uh, to $80 billion. So now, for the first time, it becomes possible for me to, with a few graduate students, but that's all you need is a few, to get them to realize you want to protect biomedical research you're going to have to be critical of these new Ohio-class submarines, or at least learn about it and be informative. And I think that's, you know, our hope is not to try to re uh, repeat the nuclear weapons freeze campaign. That was appropriate for its period in history. We're in a different period now. We have to speak to this lowering of the standard of living of tens of millions of Americans, which is why they're unhappy in getting into gear and make these connections. So do take a look at this. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit abstract, right? It's not yet a bill. It's not a Marky Lou bill, you know, where it's an actual bill you can lobby for, but it sets the stage for the next, next phase. Thank you very much.